Hello and welcome. If you have any anxiety about chemistry, oh my gosh, here we are. We're going to uh, help quell that anxiety through this Chem Solver program available at mcsdrinking.com. Um, here it is. And uh, we're going to be just focusing today on stoichiometry, which is we have about 10 questions, 10 practice questions we'll go through um, to help you see how it works and what it can do for you. And I uh, hope you like it. And here we go. Okay, here's the chemistry solver main menu. Um, first is stoichiometry, then their gas laws, thermochemistry, solutions, acids and bases, electrochemistry, kinetics, and then the more topics are gonna include equilibrium, nuclear chemistry, redox reactions, and a whole load of constants. So without further ado, let's go to the stoichiometry. And we're basically limited to uh, three topics here, molarity, percent composition, and empirical formula. And so in these 10 questions, we're gonna go over a few of the variations here. So the first thing is we're going to get molarity from moles and volume. Now, again, your teacher may not be uh, so user-friendly as to label what you're actually doing and rather just start where this uh, blue asterisk is. So what we're going to do is, oh, calculate the molarity. Okay, cool. So in, in this basic formula, and this is what's cool about this program, is it shows the basic formula, molarity equals moles per liter, and whatever variable you're looking for whatever unknown you're trying to solve for it'll give you the equation for that and you'll see that in upcoming questions so without further ado let's do molarity okay so the moles okay is 0 0.25 moles of sodium chloride so 0 0.25 i'm sorry i probably didn't read the question for you um a student dissolves 0 0.25 moles of sodium chloride in enough water to make 2.0 liters of solution calculate the molarity of the solution. So I like to underline everything we have or what we're looking for. So um, we got the moles, that's 0.25 as I typed in, um, and then two liters of solution. And look, um, be careful because this program is assuming liters. So if you ever get milliliters, like say you get uh, 500 milliliters, just type that in as 0 0.500 liters. So um, here we've got two liters and then it looks like we've got 0 0.125. And again, it's got the formula for you right there. But we're going to type in or write on our little quizlet here. I don't mean to say quizlet, like little quiz. Um, 0 0.125 uh, M. M is molarity, which basically stands for moles per liter in chemistry. Okay, let's go on to question two. Um, volume for molarity in moles. So now we're going to look for volume. So that's option three. And then... Um, how many liters of a 0.5 molarity, um, KOH is potassium hydroxide, I believe, solution, can be made using 0 0.75 moles of potassium hydroxide. So it looks like the moles is 0 0.75, and you can just enter that as 0 0.75. That's totally fine. And then the molarity is uh, 0 0.5. And again, you could just put 0 0.5 or 1 divided by 2, 1 half. Okay, so it looks like the liters is 1.5 liters there. Um, probably didn't have to do L equals that. My goodness, I'm being redundant. Okay, um, problem three, moles from molarity and volume. So how many moles of H2SO4 present in 3.5 liters of a 0 0.25 molarity solution? So what we're going to do is um, solve for moles here. And then, oh, what's the molarity? Oh, it's 0 0.25 molarity solution. And then the volume in liters is 3.5. We're going to enter that there. And then it looks like we've got 0 0.875 moles. Okay. And then um, some teachers are persnickety about certain things like uh, circling, boxing, or underlining your answer and labeling units. So I, I want to follow that protocol as much as I can. It goes against my nature because I'm more of like a basic math guy where I'm not labeling units at all. Bad habit on my part. So apologize. I'm going to be hypocrite and demand that you do it, but not do it myself. Okay. Um, percent composition is the next thing. So we're going to go back to the basic stoichiometry menu. And that's how you're going to navigate through these uh, menus in the program. So now we're looking at percent composition. And then it says, okay, cool, we can solve per, for percent composition, uh, the mass of the element or the total mass. And I, I say mass of the element, it could be the mass of a compound um, within a larger compound or uh, solution. So I just want you to be aware of that. Uh, oh, and in the comments, if this is helping you, you know, like it or subscribe, because I'm going to go through 
all the menus. Gosh, that's like about 10 or 11 different uh, basic topics. So you can see, I don't want to overwhelm you at once and do like a three hour deep dive um, because you're just going to have to pull up a pillow and, um, and, a, and a blankie and take a nap if I do that. So, um, hey man, I know how the world works. Okay, so percent composition of oxygen in um, H2SO4. So we're looking up percent comp. And um, by the way, um, oxygen is 16 grams per mole. But this is, this is what's tricky. Um, I do want to tell you that you see how it's like O with a four as a subscript? That means every time you calculate the percent composition, you have to multiply whatever the oxygen is by four. So it's going to be four times 16. Okay. And that's 64 grams of oxygen. That's what we're dealing with. I'm not going to box it because that's not the final answer. But that's going to be um, 64 grams of oxygen in this whole thing, which is 98.08 um, grams per mole. So the percent composition, so again, some of these are going to be two-step problems. The mass of the element, in this case the oxygen, is actually 64. Because even though you say, hey, it's 16, is its gram formula mass? But there's four of them because of that four as a subscript right there. Okay, um, so 64. The total mass is 98. 0.08 and they gave it to us that was kind of nice because otherwise you might have to do it by hand and do that be like two times the h value we don't have a subscript for the s so it's like one times where the s value is and then four times and the value for the gram formula mass is oxygen is 16 um but they gave it to us that was very nice of them so percent composition is 65.25 i'm just going to go with four sig figs today um and 65.25 and again, um, I'm just showing you, we do have the formula. If you do have to write it down, the percent comp is going to be the element um, over the total mass, um, element mass over total mass times 100. Okay, so uh, we continue. So now for question five, oh my gosh, we're almost halfway there. This is good. Um, a 75 gram sample of K2CO3 contains what mass of potassium? And, and K is potassium, by the way and K is 39.10 grams per mole, and the percent K is 56.58%. So we're going to solve for the mass of the element, and then um, what's the percent composition? Um, and I'll, I'll label it, what mass, that's what we're looking for, and the percent composition is this. This is a red herring, the 39.10 grams per mole, as science and math teachers are wanted to do. Okay, um, percent composition is 56.58. And then um, the total mass is 75, because that's the uh, sample. You don't have to do, put the trailing zero, like 0, 0.0, but you can if you like. Um, and then it looks like we've got 42. I'm gonna again go just to four sig figs. I know your teacher may have very specific rules about sig figs, but um, I'm just going to go with four sig figs for this. So 42.44 grams of potassium. Okay, um, total mass from element mass and percent. So if a uh, compound contains 12.5 grams of nitrogen, and nitrogen represents 28% of the total mass, what is the total mass of the compound? So we're going to solve for total mass here. And then what is the mass of the element? Oh, okay, cool, it's 12.5. Again, it's not gram formula mass, it's uh, the mass of it within that compound itself. Um, and then the percent composition, it looks like it's 28. It's 28.0 again. I'm not gonna put trailing zeros. Um, and it looks like the total mass is 44.64 grams of uh, the total compounds, 44.64, okay. Good, um, we're mostly through this. So let's go, um, oh, molarity, we're back to that topic again. Um, so option one of that stoichiometry submenu. So, oh, 250 milliliters. Okay, so first thing I warned you guys about that 0 0.25 liters, ha ha, we could do that conversion. For a uh, molarity solution is diluted to one liter, what's the final molarity? So the first thing we have to do is find out um, how many moles do we have. So I'm gonna talk about A and B. So A is how many moles? So that's a question, how many moles do we have? And then the, the B part is gonna be what's the molarity, okay? 
So I, I just want you to know that these are, this is a two-step guy. So, or gal, or woman, or man. I mean, I'm, I, I, hey, I don't mean to be uh, mean here or anything. Um, or non-binary, whatever, whatever this is. I just, the thing, whatever this thing is. Um, so, molarity. Okay. So, first, we're going to solve for moles. Sorry. I lost myself for a second trying to be politically correct. Um, what's the molarity? Um, oh, we're trying to find the moles. The molarity is four. I'm still losing my brain here. Forgive me. And then the uh, volume is 0 0.25 because that's how many liters it is. So just, just be careful with that. If you ever see milliliters, for the program's sake, you want to convert to liters. Um, looks like we've got one mole. So that's cool. So that's one for the first question. And the big question, what's the final molarity? So we want to look up for uh, molarity. And then the moles, one. That's That's this one right here. And then the volume, okay, cool. It's one liter, so one. And the molarity is one, so one molarity. All that work for just one simple answer, that's a uh, an integer answer. Okay, so it goes. That is the way it is sometimes. Okay, um, volume for target molarity, question eight. Um, what volume of 12 molarity um, hydrochloric acid stock solution or HCl stock solution is needed to prepare 500 milliliters? Okay, okay, you guys are on your toes, so I know you're thinking 0 0.5 liters um, of a three molarity um, HCl. So this is going to be a, a, a two-step problem as well. First thing we have to do, is find out how many moles we actually have. So that's going to be this part. I'm going to highlight that. That we got to find out how many moles. So um, the moles here, and then the second thing I'll do in aqua. That's going to be the volume. So I'll try to stick to red uh, for the moles here. So we're going to try to solve for moles first. And the molarity is three. That means, remember, that's the uh, the M here. And the moles is molarity times liters. Again, this is a great example of how you're going to be able to see the formula or the equation you need to solve for whatever missing variable you have, whatever one you select on the menu there. So molarity is three. And the volume, oh, it's 0 0.5. I'm not going to fall for your tricks. I'm right, 500. Um, so 0 0.5 liters. So it's 1.5 moles. That's what we're dealing with. So we're doing 1.5 moles with a 12 molarity stock. So th this is cool. So now solving for the volume, the moles, okay, that's 1.5 from there. That's that red underlined value. And the molarity is 12. Again, I have to put, I don't have to put the trailing zeros. Um, so the volume is, ooh, I said I was gonna do aqua, so I wanna stick with that, is gonna be 0 0.125. And here we have the units, the, the liters there. So there we go. We got you covered. Okay, great. Um, next one is, uh, are we on, um, yeah, we're on number nine. In a mixture containing um, 45 grams of sodium chloride, also known as table salt, and 180 grams of water, what's the mass percent of NaCl? So this is a funky one where I, I do want to show you, um, we are doing, um, What's the mass percent? So the, that's going to be a percent composition question. And then it is going to be, we're solving for percent composition. So look, um, the mass of the element, that means the mass of the element we're looking for is that 45. So I'm going to go 45. And then here's the funky thing. This is the total mass question. The total mass, well, it's going to be 45 plus 180. Again, you can use your calculator to do this. I'm pretty sure it's 225 grams. So I'm going to go, um, total mass is 225 there. And then the percent comp, <clears throat> excuse me, is 20. So I'm going to go 20% mass percent of NECL. <clears throat> excuse me, making a funny sound when I'm inhaling. Gosh, I remember that's how old men sounded um, at mass when I was a kid. Okay, um, now we need uh, total mass um, from element or total mass from element mass and percentage. So that looks like uh, we're going to do this again. So a sample of, looks like, what is this? Is this copper sulfate? I don't know. I'm going to guess it is. Uh, CuSO4 contains 15.8 grams of copper. If copper represents 39.5% of the, I'll erase that, compound by mass, 
what's the total mass of CuSO4? So we're looking for total mass here. And the mass of the element, that's going to be that 15.8. Sorry, I didn't underline it before. So 15.8. And that what's that percent composition? Oh, that's 39.5. So we're going to do that, 39.5. And there we go. The total mass is 40 and then grams. Okay. Fantastic. We've done it all. I just want to give you a sneak peek, by the way. Um, I think the stoichiometry, honestly, is, is just okay in this program. Um, I know bouncing equations is probably what you'd love to see. I don't think I have enough memory in the calculator to make that kind of program. But the gas laws are killer. I, I do want to say that. So we've got all the gas laws, ideal gas law, Boyle's law, Charles law, even got the gas constant. But look, ideal gas law. First thing, choose the R value because you can solve for P, V, N, or T. And then this is the funky thing. Okay, in most cases, standard value is 0 0.08206 liters times atmosphere per mole um, times Kelvin. That's what's usually used. So if I do this, that's going to be the default for when I do PV equals NRT. So that's going to be the default until you start the program again. You can run through iterations of this until you close the program. It'll be using that R value, just so you know. Okay, um, I'll probably have that next video out sometime later this week, fingers crossed. Otherwise, um, good luck in your chemistry endeavors, and I'll catch you next time.